Well, good evening, Fairfax Hog, Harley Owner Group Road Captains. My name is Joe Livingan. I'm going to be taking you through the Road Captain uh, Refresher webinar this evening. This is a webinar, so this is a one-way conversation. But if you do need to ask a question, you can um, do so via the chat mechanism, which is down at the bottom. Um, then let me just go ahead and go through what we're going to talk through here today. So first off, um, I know who's uh, participating in this webinar. I'll have an attendance report at the very end, and so I'll make sure that you receive credit for this, and we'll renew your Road Captain uh, refresher through 331 of 2020. We're going to be on the phone. It's not going to quite take 45 minutes um, to review as through the webinar. I anticipate it'll probably take about 30 or so minutes. Then we'll have a short little quiz at the end. And then uh, if there's any questions, you can shoot any questions over to me and I will help to answer those. So uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Joe Livingood and uh, I'm your head road captain. And I just wanted to let you know uh, my road, uh, email address is roadcaptain at fairfaxhog.com and my telephone number is on the screen. If you ever need to get a hold of me, please feel free. And as we go through into today, um, just wanted to let you update you on a couple of facts for what's happening with some of our road captains. Uh, we currently have about 70 members on record. And then um, to remain a, a current Fairfax Hog Road Captain, what's required is that you need to maintain your national membership in um, the Harley's Owner Group as well as be current with Fairfax Hog. We have membership renewals that are going on right now, so please make sure that both your national and local memberships are renewed. Uh, you have to road captain or ride lead uh, or a, an event, at least one event each year. Uh, we want to keep you active in that. And then we just also ask as well, just like you're doing today, is to attend the annual road captain uh, refresher, whether it's a seminar that's live or a webinar like we are doing tonight. So what does it mean to be a road captain or a ride leader? Well, quite frankly, you're the organizer. You're the person that helps to determine where everybody's going, you're leading the group, you're in control, you're the navigator, you're the one that rides for everybody. Um, you are the consistent anchor, um, being able to direct. I, I like to refer to you're the quarterback, calling all the plays in the huddle and making sure that everyone knows where they're supposed to be and then executing on those. A um, couple of other things that as you're doing your road captain duty, you're also the temporary safety officer. Um, for the entire group, you're providing directions, instructions, helping people understand from signals what's going on, and then you're coordinating as well with your tail gunner and wing, making sure that you're in communication so that you're able to secure lanes, be able to pass along information uh, efficiently um, throughout each ride. A couple things to consider before you get into uh, uh, being a road captain on any particular event is Mental limits, make sure you're aware of any stress that's going on in your life, any personal issues that you may be dealing with, um, whether there's any um, traffic conditions that may occur because of events or anything that are in town. You need to know your physical situation, i.e. maybe you've been sick. You want to uh, make sure that you're at full strength. Um, riding and leading a group um, is a heavy responsibility. We want to make sure that we do so in the, in the best uh, energy and effort that we have, and also making sure that we're not on any medication that could by any way impact our um, ability to lead a group. We also have to look through the environmental side, what's happening with weather, making sure that uh, there's no, uh, not too much rain that's coming down or there's ice or oil or any different debris on the road, potholes, et cetera. We want to make sure to take all these things into account before um, we are leading any ride and making sure that we are ready to go as a road captain. A couple of things that we do to prepare for each ride is making sure, of course, that we wear the appropriate gear. That means the DOT helmet, making sure you have uh, protective clothing, whether it's jacket, boots, chaps, et cetera, gloves and eye protection. We want to make sure that we're setting an example so that all the other riders are seeing what, uh, how we are addressing and making sure that we are safe to, to ride and they um, will we'll do the same. But also we need to prepare our motorcycle, and that's simply a T-clock inspection of tires, wheels, controls, lights, oil and fluids, and chassis in your stand. Uh, this is literally a, a five-minute walk around um, inspection that you can do on your motorcycle and just doing a simple T-clock of checking those tire pressures, especially as you're transitioning from a winter to, to spring and summer months. As the temperature warms up, um, your tires will be losing some of that air of the cold winter months, and you want to make sure that you're at the proper riding pressure. Um, also making sure that cables are adjusted, making sure your brakes are in proper working order, testing all those before you get out on the road because you don't want to find out about anything not working while you're riding. Hey, there's also proper suspension, making sure that everything is, you know, we, we don't want to overload the bike. We've all seen the pictures of the 42 things loaded on a bike. We want to make sure not to overload it because it doesn't handle as well. 
And finally, making sure that our lights are working, horns, horns turn signals, et cetera, so that uh, we know where we're going and that others around us are able to follow. Hey, part of our job is to also um, be responsible for the group. And so a couple of things we can do um, while we're leading is improve our visibility, make sure that we're wearing appropriate clothing, whether it's uh, safety green, uh, bright uh, uh, colors to help make people aware of what is going on. Um, we also like to say make sure that you manage your time, space, and traction. Um, you want to be able to make sure that you can match your speed to what's going on around you, um, being able always to uh, understand where any potential exits or obstacles are. And always, we always encourage people to take an ERC, an experience rider course, whether it's through the Motorcycle Safety Foundation, Motorcycle Riding Concepts, um, just uh, anything you can learn is, is always going to be additional good information. And most importantly at the end is practice and improve your skills. Um, this is something that people, yeah, I ride around, I ride around, and I ride a lot, but do you actually practice and improve your skills? Um, a great way to do that is the Friends Helping Friends. Um, typically, it's the first Sunday after each chapter meeting, a great way to learn how to do slow riding and being able to learn how to control your motorcycle at slow speeds and be able to make those extremely tight U-turns or being able to handle uh, your motorcycle with ease. Um, it's a lot easier to ride a motorcycle at fast speed than it is at low speed. So I encourage you to, to work with those that are better at you, just like you would any other sport. You want to spend time with those that are, that are better uh, in order to help enhance your own ability. Hey, when you plan for the ride, the most important things you can continue to do is make sure that you inform the group of what's going on during your pre-ride. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, but the pre-route, uh, the, the, the um, uh, briefing is one of the most important things that we can do as a chapter. Um, it's just a road captain being able for everyone to understand exactly what's going on is critical. A pre-ride, although it's not required, it is strongly, 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 I think I said strongly recommended. Um, how do you know where you're going if you haven't been there? You need to understand it. And just because you've been there 10 times um, doesn't mean that it's the same tomorrow that it was today. Uh, given what happens in the Northern Virginia area, traffic and roads and conditions can change overnight. So you want to make sure that you pre-ride it, you understand if there's any additional potholes, any traffic concerns, any debris. Um, any light signal changes, any of that stuff. Uh, we also want to make sure you keep being a group to uh, good riding size. Uh, keep the group together, never get anybody apart, and don't put all the novice riders in one group. Um, we want to make sure that we have you know, novice riders that are spread into the, the various different groups. Um, typically, we like to put some of those ex inexperienced riders up closer so we can keep an eye on them and make sure that um, we're able to, they're able to keep pace with us. Uh, sometimes people have a tendency to stick them in the back, and unfortunately, um, that can stretch out the group even further because it's, it's difficult for uh, you as a road captain to see what's going on for some of your, your newer riders that are in, in the back of the pack. Uh, route sheet, pretty simple. Make sure you have a ride, the name, date, departure point, the number of legs, segments, distance, little narrative description. The more you can do, the better. And... Uh, you know, provide any special piece of information. So here's a route sheet right here, just some of the basics of it. As you can see, this is the Cooters one done on Thursday, June 14th last year. This was a Thunder Thursday by Ray, and it goes through. And as you can see, it does have a nice name of the ride right there at the top. Uh, in addition, it shows you each of the segments and how long they are, um, and that's what's in, in critical so people understand how long it is before each turn. Then next there is just Simple, hey, here's the total mileage. After each turn, what's going on, our total mileage, those people that have smaller tanks, they always want to understand what this number is. This way, too, um, people will be able to plan accordingly and knowing around how long uh, the, each leg will take. Uh, right down in the uh, turn side, to give the arrows a description of here's what's going on, whether it's a right turn, a left turn, a stop sign, a stoplight, et cetera. And then always be able to put any additional information in there, whether it's uh, landmarks, news, any information, uh, addresses, et cetera. People always like to understand exactly what's going on uh, and where they're going to be headed. It also, too, allows for someone, if they're going to be joining you somewhere, to be able to provide that information to another rider that might not be starting with the group but may want to pick up at one of the uh, stops or departure points. All right. Now, what else do we do? Well, pre-briefing, pre as I mentioned earlier, is the most important thing we can do. Use the pre-briefing writing card. Typically during the live seminars, I hand those cards out, but I always have them with me as well as I keep them at the chapter meetings and on my person 
just please grab one of me uh, from these at the next chapter meeting. Uh, we want to make sure that you provide all the destination route stops, make sure everyone understands what's going on, where they're going to go, what time we're going to get there. Uh, talk about some of the, the speed of what's going on, making sure to discuss any road conditions and um, you know any weather issues that could come up. Finding out about any of the different new riders or anyone that's uh, maybe new to group riding. Um, any bikes that are being broken in. Um, I always like to, to talk and ask about if there's any phobias, i.e., does anyone have any concerns about gravel or, hey, going over the Bay Bridge, et cetera, making sure that you understand those before you get to the experience because if you don't have an idea um, what's going on, you don't prepare the group, it's always much more difficult to solve that situation while you're having it and instead of before. I'd like to make sure to go through uh, explaining the turn signal, I mean, excuse me, the tail gunner's job and the wingman's job just so people understand that you know, that wing is holding position as you're getting ready to do a lane change so that uh, not the whole group uh, moves over and is able to communicate and help to keep pace and tail gunner his importance of securing lanes and being able to uh, continue to close a back door, open some things up, which we'll be going over in just a little bit. Um, and again, uh, as we go through all the hand and foot and turn signals for being able to review this just so people understand what they are. Well, sometimes we take it for granted that people know what they are. But in order to review those so that people understand, these are each of the hand signals and pass those along accordingly. And again, pre-ride briefing, always use that pre-brief card. Um, just simple, laminated, it's pretty much weather dependent or weather, weather uh, non-destructible and just uh, good to be used. As you can see, these are the questions that are on there. It has my information on there as well as um, uh, the, the group. and activities line, so please uh, use those pre-ride briefing cards. Uh, and like I say, grab one from me next time you see me or at a chapter meeting. All right, so what we do, you know, we are the one that are responsible for using the right speed for the group. And quite frankly, the, the less, least experienced rider is our common denominator. They're the person that we need to adjust the, the, the speed to in order to make sure that's there. Um, I always like to make sure that we're planning ahead, as I said, pre-riding, because you're the person that rides for the group. Um, you're able to set that pace, and if a group gets strung out or stretches out, it's because you're leading them too fast. Uh, typically, when it's happening is people start to get strung out when they're going to, uh, at a speed. Maybe they're not paying attention. But if you're not in communication with your, your tail gunner or not being able to look back and you see your, your group rubber banding, most likely it's the fact that you're going too fast and the group is, is unable to keep up. So you want to make sure that you're adjusting your riding style to the size and skill level of each group. All right, group riding part one. We go through um, some of the various stages for, for group riding. Just remember, staggered formation is our default formation at all times. Um, we, we default to the stagger formation. We use single file when needed. Um, and typically what that's in regards to whether there's no lines on the road um, to make uh, the uh, stagger formation um, not there, or it's a curvy, twisty road, and in which you, the motorcycles are going to need the entire uh, lane in order to be able to execute those maneuvers. So we want to make sure that um, that we're giving it. You know, Fairfax Hog, even though in some states lane sharing is is, is legal uh, at Fairfax Hog, we do not endorse lane sharing. That's when uh, you are <clears throat> side by side riding, um, except when you are coming up at a stop sign. Or a stoplight, we we actually break into that lane sharing mode, so we're side by side in order to minimize the, the space of the group. Um, and uh, if uh, during official parades, uh, you are allowed to do that lane sharing, but we don't do lane sharing uh, during our normal rides. Um, also, as a note, we you know we don't want to have tail gunners blocking traffic for us. Uh, we want to make sure to take the group out when there is an appropriate gap. We don't want to put anyone's uh, bike or themselves at risk. Uh, as we go through, make sure, you know, as we're leading the groups, you have the correct space. Um, stay alert, know what's happening. Um, as, as we all know, but just a reminder, we have no tolerance for any alcohol in any ride. If there's ever alcohol on a ride, plain and simple, that person is excused from the ride, end of story. Um, they are not able to continue that ride. And when that happens, you need to report that to myself as the head road captain, as well as the director. If there happen to be any other officers with you during that, that event, make sure you notify them as well. But uh, if you drink, you get tossed. It's, it's just done. There is no tolerance. There is no drinking when it comes to riding with Fairfax, Harley's owner group. All right, we're going to review some basics of stagger formation. T 
two seconds in, in the bike in front of you in the same channel versus one second to the bike um, uh, in, in the other opposite uh, channel. Uh, two second rule is pretty simple. You can, uh, people often ask me, so Joe, how do you know if you're two seconds behind it? It's like, well, you look at an object, uh, whether it's a, a road sign, whether it's a pothole, whether it's a manhole cover, and when they go over it, if you can count to two, 1,000, then you know that you're two seconds behind. Um, in a single file, uh, it's really a modified single file. It's, you're taking the staggered and you're, you're moving it, but single file, sometimes new riders think that single file is literally getting directly behind the bike in front of you and single file is actually a modification of that you actually want to be a little offset on each so that way you're able to see uh, further and that's the whole point of single file is that you want to be able to see further in what's going on uh, in front of you whether it's because of uh, the road conditions being curvy or just because of the space that's there you want to make sure that you have as much visibility as possible um, lane changing on a highway pretty simple um, it can be tough though when you're going through this and I'm going to go through actually some of the, the formation here and some animations that you're going to see right now. There may be a little lag because this is a webinar but just wanted you to, to see kind of in action what, what this actually looks like. So the road captain turns on his turn signal and the road everyone else passes it back. Then the tail gunner secures the lane and then after the tail gunner secured the lane then the whole group will, will move her. That's a simple group lane change left maneuver. Um, but it's once again the captain, road captain puts on that turn signal. If you have comms with your tail gunner, it's easy. You can radio it back. But if you don't have comms with the tail gunner, you pass that signal back. Tail gunner then secures the lane, and then uh, the whole group pulls over once the uh, tail gunner secured it and the road captain starts to execute that turn. The second one here is a right change. It's similar, but the road captain actually moves over to the right position, puts on the turn signal. The tail gunner then realizes that has to be secured. Once it's secured, then the entire group can move over and then remain or form back up in stagger formation. All right, so then we get to closing the back door, part one. And this is simply when uh, you have a, a vehicle and you're coming to a merge area and you want to be able to slow that um, and make sure that you don't get a car mixed up in the size of the group. So in this case, what will happen is the tail gunner will move over, will end up securing the lane, and then sliding back in afterwards helping to prevent making sure that you know a car doesn't get mixed into the middle of the group. Now there are other times when it happens when you have the car and he's going past you and what's important is that you, you want to then secure that so that that car can get in front of the head from as you the, the ride leader and be able to uh, uh, get out in front so he's not being mixed up or mixed up with with the balance of the group. Uh, these things work much easier if you have comms but if you do not uh, quite simply make sure uh, in your pre-briefing you're going through the rides uh, the actual the turn signal uh, and what happens when you change lanes because a lot of novice riders or new riders to Fairfax Harley will see a right or left turn signal and they'll want to just start coming over versus the controlled uh, sweep that we have or lane changes that we execute. So um, again, a great thing to make sure you're reviewing during your pre-briefing, pre-ride briefing. Stopping at an intersection, pretty straightforward. What you want to do is to make sure the group is goes and they. Uh, come alongside in the lane sharing position so you're in the smallest amount of space as possible. Uh, tail gunner, always like to have them in the middle line of light just so that way you're sure um, that the whole group is there and you can see them through that. And so here's a example of what that looks like. So you come and for departing from a stoplight, it's pretty simple. The light turns green and then the, the group is able to depart. Pretty straightforward. We've done it a million times, but that's there. A four-way stop is a little bit different. Uh, each vehicle actually has to come to a complete stop. So in this case, here we are. Each of the groups is pulling up and they're one at a time leaving. In this case, you see a car that comes through, allow them to continue on, and then allow the rest of the bikes to catch up. If for some reason a, a, a car um, gets into that pack during that four-way stop and, and moves in, uh, it's your, your responsibility to pour that, uh, pull that group over, um, be able to uh, pull over somewhere, be able to then re regroup um, and get the, the group back into order. So uh, group parking, this is something that um, unfortunately uh, I see way too often and um, it's it's one of the, the, the critical issues that I think a lot of road captains uh, overlook. And that's the most important thing is to get the entire group off the road. Um, a lot of times people will start to pull into a gas station, next thing you know they're pulling straight into a spot um, you want to make sure that you've gotten the entire group off the road so you don't have um, leaving anyone sitting out on the road with traffic uh, coming behind them. 
Uh, what we do from a standpoint is we're, we're coming in and as the motorcycles are coming in, as you can see in this animation, all the motorcycles are turning through and then the, they start to park. Our job is to make sure that everybody parks first. A lot of times people with the small gas tanks want to go run and get the gas, but uh, letting them know during the pre-briefing, here's what's happening. What we do is we park all motorcycles. Then once that happens, everyone's parked, everyone's in good shape. Uh, we feel like, okay, you, you got everyone packed. Then you can give the command to, hey, okay, go ahead, fuel up, top off if you need to, let everyone go, um, do what they need to to get additional gas, go to the restroom, et cetera. But we want to make sure that all motorcycles are parked quickly, um, safely, uh, and uh, efficiently at the same time. All right, so reviewing some of our hand signals. Just pretty straightforward. Here we have start your engines, as you know, starting them up, twirling around, the stopping, uh, the left hand, uh, right hand down, 45 degree angle, put that palm down, making sure people understand, hey, we're, we're stopping. Slow down. This is uh, typically, you know, what you're given to, hey, we got, you know, whether there's a car turning left in front up here, you want to make sure that the, the group, uh, especially in the back, knows that, hey, we're going to be coming, you know, slowing down here, whether it's for an intersection, whether it's for uh, a car turning, uh, a pothole, debris, whatever it may be, make sure that um, you're getting the group to slow down. Um, tighten up. As you can see, that's the one I call pulling the toilet handle, the old uh, crapper flusher pull handle. Um, that one, uh, typically, quite frankly, if you're having to signal that a lot, as I said earlier, it's most likely because uh, you, you might be going too fast and the group's uh, struggling to keep up. You want to make sure that you're setting the correct pace that the, whole, you know, the entire group uh, is able to, to work with. Left turn is just simple left arm extended. And then, of course, uh, the right turn is left hand extended 90 degree from the elbow vertically, signifying a right hand turn. Hazard left, um, either point down at it or uh, I prefer to use my foot just because uh, it, it, you can see that foot moving. It's a larger object than you can with the hand, um, and make sure to point that out. Um, and uh, looking to same on the hazard on the right side, just the same thing, just whether it's your foot or your hand and pointing that out. Uh, as I always like to say during the briefing, make sure you point out the debris um, right, you know, as you're getting ready to, to go over it because uh, sometimes will people will put it out when they, they see a foot but they haven't gone by the piece of debris yet. Um, it, it doesn't do you any good to, to pass the signal back um, uh, you know, 30 seconds before you get to it. Uh, single file formation, of course, one finger over the head, and then uh, for stagger formation, you're raising up your, your left arm and you're doing, I call it the, the shaka or the, the field goal where you're able to put the, the two fingers out. I do the thumb and the, the, my pinky finger for uh, hang them high, hang loose uh, uh, for, for stagger formation. Couple things about the law in Virginia. The law does require you to have a DOT approved helmet. Uh, you're supposed to have eye protection on and a valid uh, Virginia motorcycle license or any other uh, state. Uh, believe it or not, you're all supposed to have a safety inspection sticker that's valid on your motorcycle. So I know a lot of times those get overlooked, but please make sure that your vehicle, your motorcycle has been inspected. Oh, by the way, it's somebody else making sure that your turn signals, your brakes, et cetera, are all in uh, proper working order. Again, some prohibitions, can't do any lane spitting, and then we don't do any uh, uh, stopping traffic for, for, for groups. We don't want to have any of our uh, road captains out there or tail gunners out blocking traffic. Uh, never a good idea to stick someone else in harm's way. All right. Being prepared for the un unexpected, you've got to always anticipate and be prepared. So we're going to go through some incident management. This is something that... Uh, when I do the live seminars, every time I ask the question, okay, who here has been on a ride and seen someone go down? Or have, have, there, there's been an issue. Every time I've done it, there's always been at least three or four hands that go up. So, you know, it's going to happen. Um, what's most important is that we're prepared for it. So, I also have incident managed report cards. These are simple cards that help to allow you to understand some of our RAD principle about remaining calm, assessing the situation, and delegating as well as how you handle the site, what's, what's supposed to happen while, while that goes on. So first thing, you know, this is an incident that happened. It happened at an event. It happened at a very specific place. Um, and our job is to help manage the site and the event, okay? As the road captain, that is our job. So first thing we do, got to stay calm. We've got to take charge. Got to understand what's happening. We want to identify a couple of zones, hot, warm, and cold. Quite frankly, hot is where the issue is. Warm is the area right around that, and cold is controlled area where you're getting other, you know, motorcycles and everyone staging and getting people off into safety, uh, working through that. Um, 
you know, when those situations happen, you have to identify any of the hazards, whether it's traffic control, making sure to get that taken care of and starting to get that. If there's spilled uh, debris or glass or, or any, you know, actual uh, petroleum or fuel on the ground and be able to start to coordinate the team to help you um, deal with the, this unfortunate incident. All right, so a couple of principles. It's first of all, remain calm. You can't do anything if we're panicked. Um, basic common sense, but you wanna, there. First thing you gotta do is size up, hey, what's going on? What's happening, you know, what do I need to do to manage this? You wanna take care of safety first, get that, that group, for, take care of yourself, get the rest of the group in safety, and then begin to take care of the injured party. The last thing we wanna do is get someone else injured while taking care of someone else that went down. You get yourself, get the group, to safety, then to address that situation. We wanna reduce any chances for any additional injury or for anyone else to, to get hurt. Um, set some goals and start to identify who's gonna do what. Four positions, you got an event manager, you got a caretaker, a site controller, and a help seeker. Great, the, the event seeker, all they're doing is making sure the event manager, excuse me, is taking charge of the situation, recording events, helping to you know cooperate with any police and medics, and you're reporting only the facts. There is no, uh, I think he went too fast, da 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 All you can report is the facts as you know it. Um, there is no subjective uh, criteria here. When an incident happens, all you can do is provide the facts as you know that. Please don't give any um, guesses as to what occurred or your opinion, just report facts and information. Um, document those findings and then make sure that you let myself, uh, as the head road captain, uh, and also uh, the director uh, notified of, of anyone's uh, particular uh, situation. Caretaker, they're there to help take care of uh, the, the injured party, make sure to understand what's going on, help uh, with a first aid kit um, it, uh, to, to apply for any additional uh, wounds or injuries that they may have, but also they're there to help assess, uh, assess the person's condition, simple things such as asking people uh, generic questions about themselves, their birth date, do they know what their, their day is, what's their first name, what did they have? Well, I would say what you have for breakfast, but most of us probably can't remember what we had for breakfast today anyway. Um, but simple questions, you know, how old are you, who am I, do you know where you are, um, so we can help pass that information along to the medics as they arrive. Um, make sure to reassure and calm the victim, make sure everyone's okay. And um, we don't wanna move the victim or the person that's injured unless it has placed themselves in a, a, a life-threatening situation um, because we want to make sure that um, if for some reason there is some paralysis or any other injury, we want to make sure that they are, um, we are not furthering their injury by, by moving them. Um, we also don't want you to get, in and, and get hurt. Um, so we want to make sure that um, we are taking care of. A lot of times uh, people have a tendency to want to just rush out and do stuff. We want to make sure that um, we ask some of these questions, we do some of this caretaking beforehand. Site controller, I mean, this is you know probably one of the most overlooked but important positions in an incident. You're taking care of traffic. Uh, you're taking care of making sure that um, all motorcycles are taken care of. You have traffic being controlled, um, helping to slow down um, any of those oncoming cars, um, helping prevent people from um, trying to get too many people to help. Um, uh, sometimes when the incident occur, um, everyone wants to help and uh, you need to have that caretaker taking charge and then the site controller helping to, to manage that situation. We don't wanna move anything that, that's happened uh, unless again, it's putting others at, at, at risk. Um, and if, if anything, that, you know, at all possible as well, is just snap, use your cell phone and take as many pictures as you can of what, what occurred. Um, it's always a simple process, take pictures, document it. Um, words can tell the story long after or pictures can tell the story long after your words are forgotten. So uh, I always like to, if there's ever a situation, just take uh, some of the photos of, of, of what's going on to help uh, relay that information. And then as the help seeker, um, this is where um, they're able to go and whether it's to use a cell phone and to call for assistance, uh, CB radio, or if they have to go and there is no coverage and need to go physically seek help, um, always send them out in pairs. Uh, Reading through uh, uh, the Bible, the uh, disciples always went out in pairs, so sending people in pairs is a great, great example. Um, first of all, because it makes sure that uh, nothing happens to just the one individual, there's always someone to take care of it. As well as two, um, it just it allows for uh, you to get to whatever destination and communicate the facts um, as quickly as possible. An important piece of information for the help seekers, make sure you know exactly where you are, 
the location where it happened, the information that you have of, of, of the victim or injured party, and um, to relay any of that information uh, that the caretaker was having in regards to the person's condition. So uh, as we talked about the RAD principles, just simply remain calm, assess and delegate what you need to. Now, usually I'd have an open discussion right now, but since uh, we're having a webinar, we're not gonna have an open discussion. I'm gonna take you straight into a little uh, quiz here. And so I'm gonna do it through a poll online so you'll be able actually able to click through each of these. So I'm gonna launch a poll and I'll ask you to answer it. So the first poll is as follows, and let me actually unlaunch this here, is what's required for all Fairfax hog rides? Is it A, a route sheet, B, a road captain, C, a GPX file, um, or D, the all the above? All right, and I see everyone in your voting here. All right, and I will close that poll and share your results here. All right, we had 60% said root sheet, 40% said road captain, zero said GPX file. Typically, everyone always selects the all of the above. Um, and, and the reality is, is that no, all we require is a root sheet. Um, that is the one thing that is required. You don't actually have to have a road captain for it. You don't need to have a GPX file. You do have to have a route sheet though for every ride. All right, we will go to uh, our next poll. All right, so what is strongly recommended to be done for each ride? Is it A, the root, I'm sorry, uh, the root sheet? B, is it, uh, whoops, there we go, sorry. Yeah, uh, root sheet, GPX file, pre-ride the root, or all of the above. All right, and I'll close the poll because it looks like there, and congratulations, 100%, everyone got that one right there, that yes, you got to pre-ride the root, that's exactly right. All right, third is uh, what's to be reviewed during the pre-ride briefing? Is it the hand signals? Is it uh, any new bike or anyone new to riding question? Is there shifting lanes, all the above? All right, got a couple more to vote here. Perfect, and I'll close the poll. And that's right, all the above. Uh, is exactly right. Uh, we we want to be able to, to review all those things. Uh, the pre-ride briefing is one of the most important pieces as we can do. You're able to address any questions, help uh, take care of any concerns, and then uh, to help communicate and provide everyone the experience of what's happening during the ride. All right, so we'll close that one. All right, who sets the pace for the overall speed of the ride? Is it A, the road captain, B, the flow of traffic, C, the tail gunner, or you break in the fast, the one, you break into one fast group and into one small group. All right, everyone's almost voted here. Last one. All right, and that's exactly right. Uh, the road captain uh, is the one who sets the overall pace. That's, that's our job, that's our responsibility. Uh, we set the pace, plain and simple. All right, um, what is the default riding formation? Is it staggered? Is it single file? Is it loose staggered or lane sharing? All right, we got one more vote there. Perfect. And I'll share those results. And yes, staggered formation is the correct uh, answer that we do. Uh, staggered formation is our default riding position. All right, next poll. What if someone uses drugs or alcohol during a ride, the road captain must A, Wait for them to sober up. B, put them at the back of the group. Uh, C, give them a strong and verbal warning or excuse them from the balance of the ride and report it to the road cap. All right, close that one and share. Yes, you guys, exactly right. You can excuse them from the balance of the ride and report that issue uh, to the, the, the road captain. That's exactly right. All right, what is standard spacing between bikes in the same channel? Is it one second, two seconds, three seconds, or four seconds? All right. And I'll close the poll. Share the results that the standard space between bikes in the same channel 
is actually two seconds. It's, it's uh, one second if you're in the opposite channel, i.e. in one, channel one, in the left channel and right channel. Um, but if the bike directly in front of you, it's a two second rule uh, uh, is the, the standard. All right. So what duties does a tail gunner perform? Does he relay information to the road captain? Does he secure lanes during lane changes? Does he secure the back door for lane change, lane merges and turns or all the above? All right, one more vote there. All right, I'll go ahead and close that. And the answer is D, all the above. It's, uh, it relays information, wants to make sure the captain knows what's going on, secures lanes during changes, and helps to secure the back door uh, for any merges or other uh, group lane changes. Next question uh, next is, um, when stopping at a red light or a stop sign, what should occur each time? Uh, should the bike stop, side-by-side -side formation, tail gunner in the middle channel, or just you do whatever the bike in front of you does? Do you keep your bike in first gear, or do you stay in just Sanger single-file formation and wait for the light to change? All right, that was a piece of cake one, 100% day yes, of course. Uh, all bike stops, you come to side-by-side -side formation, and you put the tail gunner in the middle so that the road captain can see him. All right. When parking a large group, what's the first and most important item to consider? Is it making sure you find a big spot for the entire group to park? Is it making sure that the entire group was off the road and out of danger? Is it parking quickly or is it all of the above? All right, now I'll close the poll. And the reality is the most important thing, there can only be one most important thing, and that's making sure the entire group is off the road and out of danger. Um, parking quickly is a bonus and having a super big parking lot is great, um, but getting the entire group off is the first and foremost, safety first. Um, in some cases, what I found is, is easier to do um, is to actually, uh, almost every gas station has um, a, another adjoining parking lot or shopping center that is near it, is to pull into that area to be able to then come into the um, gas station on a, on a different side um, in order to help to secure and make sure that all those bikes are taken care of. All right, who is responsible for the overall safety of each ride? Is that the tail gunner, the wing, each person rides their own ride, or the road captain? All right, a couple more votes, and I'll close the poll. Share the results here, and. Yes, it's the road captain. We are the ones that are responsible for the overall safety of the ride each and every time. All right, here's a hard one here. What are the four incident management roles? Is there event manager, caretaker, site controller, and help seeker? Is there victim, helper, traffic controller, and assistant, road captain, wing, tail gunner, and chaplain, 911 caller, crash man, air traffic controller, and seeker? All right, I'll close that up. Share the results. It's A, there's an event manager, caretaker, site controller, and help seeker. Those are the four roles that we have for any incident management situation. All right, two left here. What speed limit should be used during each group ride? Is it A, set by the ability of the riders newest to oldest? B, is it the, whatever the posted speed limit is? Is it C, five miles below the posted speed limit? Or is it D, no more than five miles above the posted speed limit? All right, we got everyone voted. Perfect, I'll close and share. It looks like we got Neapolitan ice cream. The answer is A, it's set by the ability of the riders, newest to oldest. If you have someone that can't go that fast, that's our job as the road captain, unfortunately. That's part of the burden that we bear, is we have to be able to adjust our riding ability to those that we are leading. It's not for them to adjust to our level of ability. Um, that is your responsibility as a leader, to adjust your speed and the pace and the size of the group um, to that um, lowest common denominator. All right, and then probably the most important question that there is, is what is your head road captain leader's favorite food? Is it pizza, Rocky Mountain oysters, Hot buffalo wings or sushi? All 
All right, I'll go ahead and close that up. Um, share the results here. So, guys, first of all, um, pizza's okay. Rocky Mountain Oysters, I only eat those every once in a while. I love buffalo wings. So, buffalo wings are all about what I'm all about. Um, all right, so let me finish with that. So, um, I wanted to thank everyone for their time uh, tonight for this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to reach out to me. Shoot me an email at uh, head road captain at fairfaxhog.com, excuse me, road captain at fairfaxhog.com. And if you have any uh, other questions, you can always email me at jlivinggood at billycaspergolf.com. Um, and uh, please, uh, during our next chapter meeting, um, or just as you see me at the dealership or around, just ask me for uh, one of the uh, road captain debriefing uh, cards. I'll make sure to get that to you and make sure you're ready to set. Also, if you're at the, the um, chapter and you're at the dealership and you want to pick up one of those cards if you go into the door right next to the parts counter and just to the left where we have our officer mailbox under the head road captain mailbox you'll see uh, my box is in there and it has the uh, uh, ride briefing uh, laminated cards as well as the safety cards uh, there and available so you can just grab one there if you uh, want to get one at any particular time it's available with that, I want to say thank you for your time this evening and look forward to a fantastic riding season in 2019. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.